What's up guys? Scott here from Uncle Scott's Kitchen. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to sear a steak in a carbon steel skillet. Star of today's show is this 1.1 pound ribeye steak. A beautiful piece of meat with more marbling than your mama's backside. And co-starring this guy. This is a Debouye Mineral B carbon steel skillet. I'm actually doing a full in-depth review of this skillet and this steak is one of the cooking tests. If you want to see that full review with a lot more information, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Now this is a great recipe for dudes. Why? Because there's not a whole heck of a lot of technique. We're just going to crank the burner up to high, get the pan really screaming hot, and then just sear the heck out of that steak. Not a whole lot of prep, not a whole lot of ingredients. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've only got some kosher salt, some fresh cracked black pepper, and then a little bit of butter, and I like a little bit of rosemary and a little bit of peanut oil. Now, lots of times people will use olive oil because we're going really high heat today. I'm going to use some peanut oil. Should have a 100, 150 degree higher smoke point than the olive oil. So it might be a little bit better for high temp searing. We'll see. So to get the steaks ready, all I'm gonna do is add a few drops of that peanut oil, rub that all around the steak. And what that's gonna do is help my salt and pepper kind of adhere to the steak a little bit. And I'm going to add that kosher salt and black pepper, not only to both flat sides of the steak, I'm gonna get the edges as well. Now I am a late salter. Some people will salt their steaks the night before, let moisture be drawn out and reabsorbed. Some people will salt an hour before. I salt right before I'm gonna cook. And for me, I find that a little bit easier than trying to micromanage all this moisture being drawn out and then reabsorbed. So let's get the pan heating up. Generally takes about two minutes to heat a thick carbon steel like this on this size burner. And a bonus tip here, this Debouillet pan is still fairly new. I've only seasoned it one time. I've been cooking eggs in it. It's still fairly shiny and silvery. A trick, a bonus trick here or bonus tip is that when you sear red meat in a new carbon steel skillet at high heat, that can kind of jumpstart the color change and really add some color to your pan. So we'll see if we get some bonus color change and seasoning on our carbon steel as we go here. And the trick here to know if your pan is heated enough to do some good searing is to flick some water in the pan. A few drops of water, if it rolls around like ball bearings, then your pan is pretty doggone hot. Here I flick some in, some of it's rolling around, but in the middle, some of it was sizzling. So I give it about another 30 seconds. More water goes in and look at this. So now we know our pan is hot and it's pretty doggone fun to watch that thing roll around. In goes my oil, it starts to shimmer. I wait until I see a few wisps of smoke. And here we go, here's the money shot. Oh, is there a better sound in the entire world? Now for a steak this size and this thick, what I do here is give it two minutes on that first side. And holy cow, I'm very impressed this Debouille is doing a fantastic job at maintaining a sear. Sometimes if you put a big steak in a pan that doesn't have a lot of thermal mass, a little bit thinner pan, it will actually kind of steam. It won't be able to maintain a sear. This steak is absolutely getting a nice crust on there and that is a beautiful sear. Turn that thing over in another two minutes on the second side. And right here at about two minutes, I see a little flame. Now my wife happens to be out of town and I don't want to give her the old call and say, honey, there's some good news and some bad news. The good news is I cooked a steak. The bad news is I burned down the house. No. So I went ahead and pulled that steak off. I turned the burner off. And here again, I want to illustrate that thermal mass. I put some butter in the pan and look how much residual heat is still in that pan. It is still screaming hot. Add my rosemary. And I like a lot of rosemary. I'm a big fan of rosemary. I like a lot of rosemary on my steak. And once I've got that thing coated nicely, I'm gonna take the pan and put it in a 400 degree oven and let it finish for about four minutes or so for this size steak. And when I opened that oven door, the room was just filled immediately 
with the heavenly aroma of fresh rosemary. Really, really do love a lot of rosemary. Gonna get some butter on that guy. Gonna pull him off to a plate and let him rest for five minutes or so. Give me a little time to prepare my salad and un bicchiere di vino rosso. Let's slice in here and take a bite and see how we did. And, oh, this steak is absolutely incredible. Steak, glass of red wine, and a salad, one of my favorite meals of all time. This thing was absolutely delicious. Uh, pink in the middle. And normally I would have my steak maybe one shade a little bit more rare in the middle. It was 118 when I pulled it out of the oven, I tempted it. But just doing a YouTube video, uh, screwing around with camera equipment, uh, probably let that thing go about one minute longer than I normally would. Then again, my camera crew is me. So I think any dude can handle this recipe. Pretty simple. You get fantastic results. Just grab your meat, rub it with a little oil, add a little salt and pepper, crank your stove up to high, heat a carbon steel skillet up, sear the heck out of that steak in a tablespoon of peanut oil for about two minutes per side, depending on the thickness of the steak. Take it off the heat, add a little butter, a little rosemary, then finish that steak in a 400 degree oven for four or five minutes or so until it's done the way you like it in the middle. Now, how did the Debouillet carbon steel skillet do? I think it did fantastically. Uh, the most important thing, it had enough thermal mass, it's thick. I was worried it was a nine and a half inch pan and got a 1.1 pound steak, uh, but it had plenty of thermal mass to produce a delicious sear on both sides. An actual sear with a little bit of crust. If you get a thinner pan and put a big steak in it, it can kind of steam sometimes. It'll cook, but it'll be more steamed than seared. This was an actual nice, perfect sear. So I really like that. Second thing, that handle, that coated handle with a little plasticky medallion, um, that came through that oven heat just fine. I believe the uh, directions say you can use these pans for up to 10 minutes or so to kind of flash, finish some uh, cooking in a hotter oven, but you don't want to go higher heat for longer than that. But five minutes, 400 degree oven, I think it did just fine, no damage whatsoever there. And the third thing is this, this pan was shiny and silvery when we started searing that red meat in there. We got some color development and our seasoning is coming in. So I really like that as well. Now, after watching this video, if you decide, hey, I wanna get one of these De Bouillet Mineral Bees for myself, a very nice thing to do is use the old affiliate shopping links below this video. I buy all this equipment, not only the uh, food, but the equipment and the camera stuff in the pans with my own money. And if you use the affiliate links, that helps to kind of offset that a little bit. Nice thing to do. Um, look somewhere on this screen for links to other videos you might enjoy. Also make sure you're subscribed if you want to see that full in-depth review of this Debouillet skillet. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time on Uncle Scott's Kitchen.